Hey, welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel chapter 2. Hannah was barren. The Lord answered her prayer. She's born a male child. His name is Samuel. And now we're reading that prayer. We're looking at her prayer. So we're at verses 6 to 10. We looked at the first part of the prayer yesterday morning. Today we read starting at verse 6. The Lord kills and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and brings up. The Lord makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and lifts up. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the beggar from the ash heap to set them among princes and make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's, and he has set the world upon them. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked shall be silent in darkness, for by strength no man shall prevail. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken in pieces. From heaven he will thunder against them. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. And then we have this comment at verse 11. Then Elkanah went to his house at Ramah, but the child ministered to the Lord before Eli the priest. So a period of years have gone by. We don't know exactly how many, but the child is weaned. He's very young. We'll find out more about that in the next section, in the next chapters. But even though this child is young, he's going to stay there and he's going to minister before the Lord. So let's look at the things that are said here in this prayer, a couple of things. God kills and makes alive. God is the one who ultimately, you know, decides who lives and dies. He makes poor and he makes rich. He works with us in our own life experience to, to give us whatever we need spiritually so that we can move towards his ways, towards him. And so we shouldn't be sad if we are, are very destitute. We shouldn't be particularly sad because God might have needed to do that in our case to give us exactly what we need to grow us spiritually. And we shouldn't be particularly sad if we're wealthy because God knows we can bear that in his strength. We can bear all the temptations that come out of wealth if, if he does that for us so that we can, again, move heavenward. He's trying to redeem as many as possible. I think, I think verse 9 has something important for us. It says, by strength, no man shall prevail. Many times we want to do something. We want to make something happen. And we're going to get in there and, and grind it out. We're going to do it ourselves. We're going to pick ourselves up by our own bootstraps. We're going to make it happen. We're going to squeeze out those push-ups, right? So it says here, by strength, no man shall prevail. And that's really an important principle. We prevail by seeking God. We ask him to intervene. He knows what's best for us. He has the strength we need. He has the help we need. He has the wisdom that we need. And so we look to him. He is our helper. And so if we rely on our own strength, we're going to get a big, a big, uh, a big puddle of muddy disaster. But if we look to God, he's going to give us just what we need to prevail and to grow spiritually. So some important principles here. And now Shemuel, Samuel, is going to remain in the temple. And we'll be looking at that, how that begins to work out tomorrow morning. Hey, let's pray together right now. Dear Father in heaven, by our own strength, we are going to pretty much get things wrong every time. By your strength, we can prevail. Whatever our problem, whatever our situation, whatever our, if it's a, a momentary uh, challenge or if it is a lifelong need or a lifelong challenge, Lord, through your strength, we can prevail. Help us to take courage for your help that way and pray to you and seek your intervention to draw us close to you. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So God be with you today as you seek the Lord and look to his strength to get you through each day and every hour.